Yeah, well, we got started in Green Roof Research by working with uh, Ford Motor Company because we were involved in the design and implementation of the 10-acre roof at the Rouge facility and the new plant down there. And Ford funded us to start basically looking at different systems, what plants will survive, what as far as stormwater management, how much stormwater can be held, and so forth. This roof here was put in in 2005. This is an example you'd call an extensive green roof. I mean, there's different types, extensive and intensive. The extensive basically is very shallow, so it's very low maintenance, but because it's so shallow, it very limits what you can grow. So what's growing here is a bunch of different types of sedum, which are very drought tolerant plants. And this roof is, I mean, there's hardly any maintenance required whatsoever. Uh, the plants just survive. If it doesn't rain, it doesn't rain. These plants will survive that. The other extreme would be more an intensive type roof where I could grow trees and shrubs if I had it that deep, or even something where I had you know, like grasses and perennial flowering plants and so forth. Those would not survive on this roof because the media is too shallow. The media holds storm water. Okay, the plants will transpire water. Okay, so what's happening here is the water is being held on the roof instead of running into the stormwater system. You say, well, what's wrong with it running into the stormwater system? While we keep building new roads, buildings, and so forth, all its impervious surface, that water hits those hard surfaces and runs off pretty much instantaneously into our stormwater system. Our stormwater system is only so large as we keep building. That just has to take more and more water. It can't handle it. It might be a combined sewage and stormwater system. You get overflows, you have sewage going everywhere. As far as uh, longevity of the uh, roof membrane, what causes a roof membrane to fail. A lot of it's just the temperature fluctuations, like in the day it gets really hot and at night it cools down. It does this over and over, expands and contracts. That membrane fatigues and cracks and you got a leak. And we've shown it on our data here. The membranes on the non-grief part do that. Under the green roof part, they're basically ambient temperature. So you don't have that. The roof membranes generally last two to three times as long. Uh, last fall I was on a roof in Switzerland uh, which was built in 1914 and the first time they actually repaired that roof was in 2005. So that's 91 years, whereas the roofs on campus here are designed to last basically 20 to 30 years. Why don't we see more? There's several reasons. One, because it's new here and people are, don't know about it. A lot of that's changing. Uh, but the primarily, primarily the main reason would be cost. Generally, at least in the U.S., a green roof might cost twice as much as just a conventional roof. Now that's the initial installation costs. What you're not considering is long term. Like if this roof lasts 60 years compared to another one that's only 20, well I have to replace that other one twice in that amount of time, which is a major cost. The energy savings, uh, that could be a direct influence the Pacific building. Um, storm water here, basically an individual building owner doesn't pay a storm water tax for the water that runs off his building, whereas in Germany, many of the municipalities, you pay your storm water tax based on the amount of impervious surface on your property. So if I have a green roof, then I don't have to pay that fee. What we're doing at MSU as far as research, a lot of it is uh, plants, what plants would survive and what depths and you know you plant a bunch of different species, you lay them there for five years and see what's still there. Um, me measuring the stress levels and so forth as far as water. We've done uh, storm water, we've got a couple of studies we've conducted on storm water, you know with the different systems and basically found over two years, we held 60% of all the rainwater that fell on that area. Uh, energy, we have an energy study that actually we collected data on this roof for two years, which is being analyzed by some colleagues in engineering right now. And another thing we're looking at started this year, as you can see over there, we can't, but we're starting to grow some vegetables. Uh, 
we're experimenting to see, you know, maybe in Lansing or in this area around here it would make much more sense to grow vegetables at ground level in the soil. It would be a lot easier, but if I'm in New York City or maybe inner city Detroit or somewhere where I do not have area at ground level to grow vegetables, why not grow them on the roof? It's wasted space.